Hello, welcome back um, to part two of this week's lecture in which we're going to talk about uh, statistical procedures and the choices that you will make when you have different types of data. So this is a continuation of uh, our lecture on exploratory data analysis, describing your data. So when you uh, are conducting a survey or doing some experiments in the lab or in the field or online, uh, you would have different variables and variables may be measured using different types of scales. Remember from week one and week two, we have talked about different types of scales, categorical, uh, continuous scale, uh, interval scale, uh, ordinal scale, uh, we're going to talk about all those type of scales. Uh, right now, we need to, to, to think about if you have uh, a study in which you have uh, variables that are measured in different types of scale, um, how do you analyze those data, right? Because you, you, cannot just, you cannot just be very random about it. There is a certain procedure that will tell you a certain type of data requires a certain type of statistical analysis and procedures. Um, let's say, for example, you have just before, just, just before the break, uh, we talk about the, the relationship between uh, gender and uh, education or uh, the diet, what, they, what people eat and their religious belief, right? So, uh, so when you look at people's diet, they eat meat or they don't eat meat and their religion, religion A, religion B. So both the categorical and the dependent variable are categorical. Or you have gender, male, female, and whether they um, smoke or not. Yes and no, smoking, right? So gender, male, female, smoking, yes and no. So the gender as an as a independent variable is, is a single independent variable, just a gender, male, female, right? The measurement is male, female. And you have smoking, which is the outcome variable uh, that is also measured yes and no, right? So in this instance, you have single, in, single IV, single independent variable, and a categorical type of dependent variable. So use chi-square. So this is how I explained the chi-square just before uh, this break. Uh, we don't explain what happens if you have multiple independent variables that will be not covered here. But importantly, let's say you want to measure uh, a, in a continuous, your, your, your scale of your variables is measured using continuous scale. Let's say you have only one variable, single independent variable. Let's say, uh, uh, Exercise, like, 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 how many times do you exercise per week, right? So just just one single variable. How many times do you exercise per week, right? And you can measure that in terms of zero to what, twenty times in a week, right? And you can check on people's well-being or this per these people's health outcomes, right? And when you check about people's health outcomes, for example, you ask them, do you go to see doctors often or not? How many times do you see a doctor in a year or in a month? Uh, or how is your blood pressure? Which is all metric variables, right? Um, uh, if you run on a treadmill, uh, how far can you, can you stand on the treadmill, running in the gym in a treadmill? So that measurement of how long you can stand in a treadmill is also a metric variable. So, so, so when you have exercise and uh, the health outcomes or well-being, both of the independent and the dependent variables are continuous variable. And you can, if you have this type of data, you can use correlation and you can use regression and others, right? But of course, if your variables are multiple, let's say you are trying to predict what makes people happy in life, happy is the, is the, is an index or in terms of a metric zero to whatever number that you ask them to give, and you have that as a continuous variable, and you ask what could be the variable that predict this, is it about the years of education? Is it about how much income they have? And all of these, all of these are continuous variables, right? Or is it about um, how much exercise they do per week? So all this more than one variable. Let's say you have three variable, three independent variable. 
right? And you try to understand the relationship between these three independent variables and each of them are continuous scale on the health outcomes. Then you can use multiple regression because you have con multiple independent variables and you have a continuous type of dependent variable. So, so this, this is not supposed to be memorized, but to help you, you, you can a little bit if you want to do that. But importantly, this is just to give you the idea of uh, how different type of scale will help you choose different type of statistical procedures. The other type that we will talk uh, maybe about two weeks, in two weeks from now, two or three weeks from now, is T-test and ANOVA, week, um, what is it, week six, really another, another three weeks from now, right? We're going to talk about T-test. For example, you want to see the difference between, you want to know, for example, whether male and female gender, which is just one single independent variable, has uh, different relationship in terms of the uh, IQ. So IQ is continuous or metric, right? Or male and female, whether do they have any re relationship with their GPA in the, in the education, the, the grade point average, GPA. The so GPA is continuous dependent variable, continuous scale for the dependent variable. So you can use T-test to see with them male, female, differ in their GPA, things like that. And, but if you have multiple type of outcome, first of all, you say, uh, you are not only measuring male and female uh, for independent variable. You also look at, for example, uh, what else? Um, um, race. What race or ethnicity they're from? Yeah? Let's say they're Asian or they're Caucasian or they're Black or Hispanic. That's one of them, race. And then you also have gender and then you have hair color, maybe blue or uh, black and and Sorry, let's not use hair. Let's let's use um, uh, uh, religion, right? Religion A, religion B, religion C. So you have multiple independent variables, and then you have, and they're categorical, right? And then you have continuous variables such as uh, their GPA, their income, what else? Their uh, happiness index, right? So you can you can look at the relation between these two, three IV and two or three uh, independent variables. And then you can, you can do this test. Or you can just even just one, just this three, let's say gender, ethnicity, religion on their income or on their happiness, right? You can measure that. You can use ANOVA, analysis of variance. So we're going to look at T-test and ANOVA um, in about three weeks time from now. So important is actually for multiple regression. Uh, you, can, you can use multiple regression if your um, independent variable are continuous, but you can also use uh, categorical, categorical uh, independent variable in the multiple regression, because it's very common that people are using dummy variables. So for example, uh, they have a certain variable that they recode and they'll give number zero and one or zero, one and two, or just one and two, and they include that in the regression. You can, you can do that, that's, that's not a problem. Uh, so, so again, this is just to say it in a different way, you need to pay attention to the nature or the combinations of your independent variable and your dependent variable. You need to pay attention whether it's categorical or category and categorical or category and continuous or continuous and continuous. Which one is the most precise? If you are uh, doing statistical tests, which, which results will give you more precision? You got it right, continuous and continuous will give you back more precision. Because when you measure your variables using continuous scale, you're capturing more details. You're having less information loss. You're, you're capturing more precision in your data. And if your dependent variable is also captured in a more, pre more precise scale using continuous scale, and you combine it both, then you're gonna get a better result than if most of your measurements are just by categorical. Okay, a quick, Discussion, right? What what do you what do you do when you have categorical independent variable and categorical dependent variable? So you want to see the relationship between college degree, yes or no, and employment, yes or no. What test do you use? Chi square, right? Chi square, right? What about gender, male, female, and their tendency to purchase cosmetics? Cosmetics that people put on their face, right? Yes and no. So male, female, and cosmetic purchase, yes and no. Also chi-square. 
So this is the typical type of variable that you use for chi-square. Or when, when you need to do a chi-square, this is the type of measurement that you need to have. But typically, you don't start with the name of the test. You start with the variable first. So you're driven by your question. The question, your research question, will, will drive what variable you need to measure. right? After you collect the measurement, the variables that you have measured, then you think about what statistical procedures that I need to use. You don't think it in the other way. So you, the important part is you have the question first. You have the question, collect the data, have the variables, collect the data, and then you think about what tests I need to use. Of course, after you take this course, you already know if your data is of this type, categorical continuous, which one should I use? Which statistical test should I use? Right. So let's say you have a independent variable that is continuous, metric or ratio, same. And also your dependent variable is also your dependent variable is also continuous or metric. For example, do years of education affect starting salary? Right? Does work motivation increase job satisfaction? Does junk food consumption affect or increase the percentage of body fat? Right. For this, because they're both are both IV and DV are continuous, you can use correlation to look at the relationship. And you can also uh, use regression. Because if you forgot, go back to the table that I've shown you three or four slides ago and look at that table. What if your independent variable is categorical and your dependent variable is continuous? For example, you want to test um, men heavier than women. So the IV is the sex or gender, male or female. And the DV is the the weight, the people's weight. And you can collect the data, you can do a survey, and you can capture to see whether men are actually heavier than women in that sample. Then you can make some conclusion, right? Or you want to see whether university graduates earn higher income than non-graduates, right? So your IV, your independent variable, is actually yes or no. University graduate or not, yes or no. And then your dependent variable is the income. Right? And if this is the type of data that you have, you use t-test. T We're going to look at t-test in the following uh, three weeks from now. So the important analytical, analytical strategy is for you to know what is your DV, what is your IV, and know very precisely whether they are measured in ordinal, categorical, interval, metric scale, and you pick the right statistical test. And after that, you need to learn how to write on the computer in SPSS and how to interpret the results. That is what we're going to do in the computer lab. Uh, and I'll, I will also, we will also do this recording for how you um, analyze it in a computer lab, in SPSS. So there are some statistical, uh, there are some exercises that we hope that you would like to do, that you like to do, and uh, they're available in the, in the canvas. I stop it there. Thank you, bye-bye.